Happy Wednesday, everyone. You've made it to another day. Something to be thankful for. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Theodore Henry. Always happy to take you from your homes or offices on a full half hour of an informative journey. COVID-19 is still the order of business because we are determined to help our country in whatever way we can. So join us as we share our bit of help to a global problem. An important message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. What to do if you think you have been exposed or are experiencing signs and symptoms of COVID-19? Immediately call 888-1LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. In addition, you should stay at home. Don't go to work, school, or any public place. Do not use public transport and avoid visitors to your home. You may need to do this for up to 14 days to reduce the spread of the infection. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Here's where we start today, continuously spreading information on the origin, cause, symptoms, and measures to take as it relates to COVID-19. I'm sure you've been hearing much of this constantly, but for us, no amount of information is too much. Learn some more about the novel virus. Viruses are a large family of viruses found in both animals and humans. Some infect people and are known to cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS. Research reveals that SARS-CoV was transmitted from civet cats to humans in China in 2002 and MERS-CoV from dromedary camels to humans in Saudi Arabia in 2012. A novel coronavirus, novel meaning new strain of the coronavirus not previously identified in humans, was identified after an outbreak was reported in Wuhan, China in December 2019. It has subsequently spread to a number of other countries through human-to-human -human contact, and the World Health Organization has since officially named it COVID-19. The incubation period for viruses is the time between infection and the start of clinical symptoms of the disease. Based on information from other coronavirus diseases, such as MERS and SARS, the incubation period of the 2019 novel coronavirus, or COVID-19, is determined to be up to 14 days. As with other respiratory illnesses, this disease can cause mild symptoms, including a runny nose, sore throat, cough, and fever. For coronavirus generally, the person is most infectious when displaying symptoms. It is difficult to identify COVID-19 based on symptoms alone, as they are typically the same as infections of the flu or cold. A laboratory test is therefore needed to confirm if someone has the coronavirus. The infection can be more severe for some persons and can lead to pneumonia or breathing difficulties. More rarely, the disease can be fatal. Older persons and people with pre-existing medical conditions such as asthma, diabetes, and heart disease are deemed more vulnerable to becoming severely ill with the virus. The new coronavirus spreads primarily through contact with an infected person. It spread through respiratory droplets generated when a person coughs or sneezes or through droplets of saliva or discharge from the nose. To prevent spread, it's important that everyone practice good respiratory hygiene. It's a similar respiratory precaution as we would take for influenza. <coughs> for example, sneeze or cough into a flexed elbow or use a tissue and discard it immediately into a closed bin. Washing your hands frequently with soap and water or using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer eliminates the virus if it is on your hands. Washing of hands is very, very important because any kind of droplets that get on your hand, you can transfer to your face and you can therefore get it into your ear passages or into the eyes and cause an infection. When someone who is infected with a respiratory disease like COVID-19 coughs or sneezes, that person projects small droplets containing the virus. If you are too close, you can breathe in the virus. The general precautions in terms of making sure that you keep your distance, three feet is what we recommend. Keeping this distance between yourself and other people, particularly those who are coughing, sneezing and have a fever, helps to prevent those persons who don't have the virus from getting it. 
if you are sick, to stay away from other persons. That means not going to work or school. Someone who is coughing and sneezing should wear an approved mask where necessary. Wearing a mask is only for the sick or for medical persons who are doing a procedure. Actually, if you go ahead and wear a mask, you might be the one who would get the infection. Because they put on a mask and you see it happening. They put it on, they start sweating. They start playing around with the mask. It's getting moist. It allows the infection to get in easier. So you are actually exposing yourself. And so we have to be very careful how we use masks and other um, protective equipment. Data collected by the WHO so far suggests that the coronavirus may survive a few hours on surfaces and applying disinfectants to surfaces can kill the virus, making it no longer possible to infect people in this way. To avoid getting infected, do not touch your eyes, nose or mouth after touching any surface. Inform healthcare providers of any overseas travel in the 14 days before your symptoms developed or if you've been in close contact with someone who has been sick with respiratory symptoms. To date, there's no specific medicine recommended to prevent or treat the new coronavirus or COVID-19. But persons infected with the virus should receive appropriate care to relieve and treat symptoms, and those with severe illness should receive optimized supportive care. Remember, practice good respiratory and hand hygiene. As you can see, more and more is happening with COVID-19 each day, and our government is doing more and more each day too. Here's the latest on what they've been up to. Jamaica can now confirm that we have 105 cases of COVID-19. Uh, this follows 32 new additions over the last 24 hours. The new cases comprise of five males and 27 females who range in age is from 19 to 70 years old. The cases are from St. Catherine, Kingston, and St. Andrew. They bring to 34 the number of cases under investigation. Of the remaining 71 confirmed cases, 31 are imported, 34 are contacts of a confirmed case and six are local transmission. The vast majority of the 32 additions, indeed 31 of the 32, are linked to a call center located in the Portmore area, Olorica Intervention. This facility has a staff complement uh, based on the staff registry of some 787 uh, workers, we have so far in our intervention, uh, 258 individuals have been interviewed and sampled. Uh, 65 of those tests have come back. And of that number, 33 samples have come back positive. Two were announced a few days ago, so 31 since today. A senior team from the ministry visited the entity on the weekend, in fact, uh, during the course of the holiday weekend and the entity has since closed. Arrangements are now being made for the isolation of the newly confirmed cases. The ministry is also working diligently to identify each of their contacts for testing while investigations continue to identify other positive exposed persons. The St. Catherine Health team comprises of approximately 237 members of staff, which includes public health nurses, public health inspectors, and community health aides, and they are in fact driving that charge in the parish of St. Catherine. A lot of activity taking place now in St. Catherine as we speak, and will continue over the days to come. In terms of recovery, quarantine, and isolation, currently 21 persons have recovered from COVID-19, 20 persons are in quarantine, 
and 65 persons are in isolation. We have now tested 1,290 samples, and of that, of course, we have had 105 confirmed positives, 1,185 negatives. Over the last day, or day we announced the uh, mobilization of our mobile testing unit as part of the expanded testing efforts. And we have started, started in Clarendon, in the Corn Peace area, and this will continue over the days to come. We have five such units, and those units are going to be deployed in the respective regional authorities to expand the collection of samples for testing. The actions to contain the spread of COVID-19 and to ensure the best possible health outcomes for infected persons uh, continue to require our best efforts and all our efforts. The challenges in St. Catherine, we think will continue for some time to come and we intend to work, this is the public health infrastructure, to mobilize the all of society approach in order to contain what is uh, an unfortunate situation, but one that we have to confront and deal with. Thank you. The government at this point is announcing that there will be a lockdown for the parish of St. Catherine, starting at 5 a.m. Wednesday morning, April 15th, 2020, through to 5 a.m. Wednesday, April the 22nd, 2020. What is the objective of the lockdown? The objective of the lockdown is to slow as much as possible the spread of the virus. The minister gave you some numbers as to the number of persons tested. And with 33 persons confirmed, you can use your own imagination to figure out how many persons have been contacted, the areas that people would have traveled to, and the potential spread that can come from that. So technically, uh, you could be looking at as many as a thousand persons contacted um, in close proximity. The effect of that is very great. And therefore, the measure that we have to put in place is one that would seek to contain and slow the spread of the virus in a particular geographic area. The reason why we are looking at putting in the lockdown now on St. Catherine is that we have done a GIS, that is a geographical information system, mapping of the addresses of the affected persons. And we are seeing where the addresses cluster. The addresses of the 300 plus that we have already mapped have clustered mainly in St. Catherine and parts of Kingston and St. Andrew. For Kingston and St. Andrew, we're doing further work. We have a further 300 plus addresses to, to map. And once we can fully identify the clusters, then other actions will be taken. So for St. Catherine, we know already that there is a massive cluster and that the spread there is particularly um, probable just by virtue of the existence of the call center in Portmore, people having traveled to the call center would have used public transportation, would have congregated in public areas. So there is a concentration there. So we, are, we have to start, and I want to be clear on that to the public. This measure is a start. And we're starting in St. Catherine, depending on what the, the other mapping of the addresses show and how the cases progress from here, then we will implement broader tighter measures. If things um, go well in the sense that there is no further spread and we have contained it, then there is no need. But the government has been very responsive, very agile. As we test, as we look, as we see the data, we act accordingly. So I'm putting Jamaicans on notice that we have entered into a new phase. And as we have said before, when we are in this phase, the appropriate actions 
will be taken. What does a lockdown mean? Well, the first rule of the lockdown is that if you are ill with any form of flu-like illness with symptoms or any respiratory illness with symptoms, stay home. Some people don't understand that. Tanaya Yad. I'm sure everybody understands that. More than that, isolate yourself. Stay in a room in your house. Stay away from people as much as you can. If you are ill with any form of respiratory illness with symptoms or influenza-like symptoms, flu-like symptoms, that means you're coughing, sneezing, having a fever, stay home. You are not required to go to work. No matter how essential you are, stay home. The orders that will be in place will take the obligation of you to come to work. If you are ill, stay home. We will place an obligation on the employer that if you turn up to work, they have a duty to report you and send you home. And these obligations and duties come with a penalty. And I will be discussing penalties later on. So that is the, the headline. Number one, if you are ill, stay home. If you are 65 or older, stay home. Stay home. Even in a complete lockdown, there will be need for the essentials of life. Movement is only permitted for the essentials of life. Now, some people might believe that a bar is essential for life. I've seen a, a video circulating where there is an appeal. I'm certain that in this time of great trial for the Jamaican people, everyone understands that the essentials of life would mean, first of all, food and medicine. So you are only permitted to move, to replenish your cupboard, or if you need to replenish your prescription. There is no other reason to be on the road. Practice good hygiene by washing your hands frequently using soap and water. Here's how you should do it while conserving water. Turn on the tap to wet your hands, then turn off the pipe. Lather your hands and the tap with soap. Turn on the tap and wash your hands, back, front, and in between fingers. Use some of the water to wash off the tap, then turn it off. Dry your hands with disposable hand towels. If you don't have running water, use a hand rub containing 62% or more alcohol. If hand sanitizers are not available, rubbing alcohol, Dettol, white rum, or household bleach will do the trick. And if all else fails, let hand washing and the handling of potable water be a two-person event. Each person will take turns pouring and washing hands with sitting water. Now is a good time to consider installing a tap on your containers to reduce the risk of water contamination. Faucets can be easily attached to drums, buckets, or five-gallon water bottles. And to ensure that the outside of the containers are clean when recapping, disinfect it with hand rub containing alcohol that's 62% or more. The five R's of water conservation are also necessary to practice. Reduce water wastage by investing in water-saving devices. 
reuse water at least twice before discarding. Replace leaking pipes, faucets, and other plumbing equipment. Recycle wastewater and use it for gardening, car washing, or cleaning of public spaces. And reclaim water through rainwater harvesting. We all must play our part to ensure there's water to combat the coronavirus and stave off prolonged drought. So with the coronavirus ravaging many countries, leading to lockdowns and movement, trade is undeniably affected. Now more than ever, digital commerce is proving to be critically important. Luckily, our nation had already adapted to a technologically approved window for trade. Picture this. You're a busy entrepreneur working hard to grow your business. At the wharf to be cleared are the materials needed to make your products. You are required to visit several government offices and fill out multiple forms with similar information to complete this activity, spending time on the trading process that could otherwise be invested in your business. For you, this may just be a mental exercise, but for many entrepreneurs in Jamaica, it is the reality of trade, a reality that will change with the introduction of the Jamaica Electronic Single Window for Trade. An electronic single window ESW is an IT platform that facilitates the efficient clearance of cargo. An electronic single window is expected to bring simplification, harmonization and facilitation on international trade transactions under a robust um, electronic environment. This will bring facilities for customs brokers, government officials to interact with a computerized systems that will have a set of business rules that will allow the traders to fulfill all regulatory requirements, submit all the required data, and be able to complete their transactions in a single and seamless system. With that electronic single window for trade, clearly it's an electronic form, and that will be filled out one time at your convenience, online, and then behind the scene, you know, the BRAs, the Border Related Agency, will collaborate to ensure that your application is um, accepted. The agencies connected to the system will be able to grant the necessary permits, licenses and approval for the release of merchandise. When approval is given, the trader receives a notification and can then proceed to collect or send off goods. The introduction of an ESW will reduce the cost and time it takes to import and export goods creating a more enabling environment for local entrepreneurs and foreign investors. Where we can uh, develop and implement a system where all the transactions can take place through a particular port or point or window in this instance, it makes doing business easier. By extension, therefore, it is expected that the interest um, in conducting business will be improved, will be increased, and uh, investors will see Jamaica as an even more attractive investor destination. On the other side, it also will aid the, in the collection of, of, of revenue, where we can have a greater throughput of trade and of activity, which by extension generates even much more in terms of the economy. Implementation of the ESW began in August 2018, and the timeline for completion is 36 months. Over 20 border and regulatory government agencies will connect to the platform. The entity responsible for collecting revenue from trade, the Jamaica Customs Agency, is the lead implementing agency. The electronic single window system will be fully integrated, with, of course, with the Ascuda World system. And they're both built on the Ascuda World platform. That information will be passed seamlessly within the, from the electronic single window into the customs management system. And that, of course, reduces time and complexity, having a single point of contact and simplification of information. So that transparent environment, having that electronic uh, track and trace, and of course, ensuring that persons are carrying out their functions within the agreed time frame. The ESW is projected to reduce the number of entities a trader comes in contact with from as much as five to one. In the future, 
This is how a trader could be making arrangements for the clearance of goods. The Jamaica Electronic Single Window, facilitating efficiency in trade, contributing to a robust business environment, a part of the framework for making it easier to do business with Jamaica. We've been hearing so much about COVID-19 that it sometimes seems there could be nothing left to learn. Well, I don't know about you, but it seems there's a new theory or myth every day about the virus. Some are useful, new information being unearthed as research on COVID-19 progresses. Others are practical, common sense tips from our peers. But some are simply false information that can do more harm than good. Here are some theories that the World Health Organization has discredited. Number one, 5G mobile networks do not spread COVID-19. Viruses cannot travel on radio waves or mobile networks. Furthermore, COVID-19 is spreading in many countries that do not have 5G mobile networks. Like everywhere else in the world, it's being spread in those places through respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or even speaks. Number two, hand dryers do not kill COVID-19. Hand dryers are not effective in killing the virus. To protect yourself, you should frequently clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Number three, spraying alcohol or chlorine all over your body does not kill the new coronavirus. Doing this will not kill viruses that have already entered your body. Spraying such substances can be harmful to clothes or areas like your eyes and mouth. These substances can, however, be useful to disinfect surfaces. Number four, vaccines against pneumonia do not protect you against the new coronavirus. The virus is so new that it needs its own vaccine. Researchers are trying to develop one. Those are a few of the myths circulating. Share some others with us that you might have heard and we'll seek to get the facts. Just visit any of our social media pages. In sharing real credible information about the virus, you're also playing your part in helping to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business, even in these trying times. <laughs> We hope that you learned something because, well, that's as much as we could share with you today. But we're here every day working, compiling, and preparing to share with you again. So join us tomorrow for more Jamaica Magazine. There's even a way to watch a recap of today's episode by visiting our YouTube channel. Also keep up with the GIS by visiting our website and follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages. From all of us here at the GIS, I'm Theodore Henry. Stay safe and catch us again tomorrow. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.